Do you know how many mega projects China have? Dozens, hundreds, or even thousands. That's right, this country loves to amaze the world with projects no one has ever seen before. But this time they're using a technology that the United States itself abandoned more than half a century ago. In just seven days, Beijing approved 10 new projects at once, worth over $27 billion, and rushed to put them into action. If this plan succeeds, China will have enough electricity to power millions of people for 60,000 years, potentially opening up a new energy future for the entire world. Stay tuned for all the details on this mega project. China is accelerating its nuclear ambitions at a pace that's shocking the world. According to the World Nuclear Association, the United States currently operates the most nuclear reactors in the world, 94 in total, while China is second with 58. However, with its rapid development, China could soon catch up. The country is building 28 more reactors the most of any nation. Just this week, China approved 10 new reactors, investing over $27 billion. China is also leading in some unique technologies that differ from the standard large reactors using enriched uranium and pressurized water for cooling. For example, they're developing high-temperature gas-cooled reactors and are even pioneering experiments with molten salt reactors using thorium. What is thorium? This might be the first time you've ever heard of it. Thorium is a slightly radioactive metal with atomic number 90, discovered by Swedish chemist Jöns Jakob Berzelius in 1828. Yes, remember, it's only been known for about 200 years and was named after Thor, the Norse god of thunder. Sounds powerful, doesn't it? In its pure form, it's shiny and silver, but it turns from gray to black when exposed to air. Did you know thorium is found in most rocks and soils on Earth, and it's three times more common than uranium? We might have overlooked this element if China hadn't started this project. In fact, thorium once drew attention, but not in China in the United States. Back in the 1950s and 60s, during the height of the Cold War and nuclear technology, the United States tested molten salt reactors at Oak Ridge National Laboratory in Tennessee. The results safer operated at atmospheric pressure and less risk of explosion. But Washington turned its back. Why? Because they needed plutonium for atomic bombs, not thorium for civilian electricity. And so this promising technology was left behind. Halfway around the world, and more than half a century later, a team led by Xu Hongjie in China quietly dug through Oak Ridge's research, recreating every detail. After 20 years of persistence, they revived a technology the United States had forgotten. In 2021, in the Gobi Desert, the world's first 2-megawatt thorium molten salt reactor officially began operation. It's the only working thorium reactor on Earth just 75 miles from the city of Wuwei in Gansu province. As you can see, China never does things halfway, and the Gobi Molten Salt Reactor Project is no exception. Thorium is three times more abundant than uranium can hardly be weaponized and could provide cleaner, more sustainable energy. To put it in perspective, the Bayan Obo mine alone contains about 1 million tons of thorium, enough to meet China's electricity needs for 60,000 years. Even more amazing thorium can release 200 times more energy than uranium. Yes, you heard that right. The Gobi reactor itself is an engineering marvel using super alloys that withstand extreme heat radiation and chemical corrosion, all while operating at atmospheric pressure, a world apart from disasters like Chernobyl or Fukushima. However, before we get too carried away with these promising advantages, there's a reality we can't ignore. Do you know why the world hasn't widely adopted thorium? The main reason is that thorium isn't a ready-to-use nuclear fuel. Thorium-232, its only natural isotope, is fissionable, but not fissile, meaning it can't sustain a chain reaction on its own. To split its nucleus and release energy for electricity, it must first be bombarded with high-energy neutrons to convert it into uranium-233, which is truly fissile. Sounds complicated it is, and that's the biggest challenge so far. 
Understanding this explains why China's molten salt reactor technology is so special. Imagine a traditional nuclear reactor is basically a giant superheated boiler. Inside uranium-235 nuclei are bombarded by neutrons, split apart, and release enormous heat. This heat boils water, the steam spins turbines, and the turbines generate electricity. Sounds simple, right? The usual formula, fission heat, steam, and power. But here's the fatal flaw. Everything depends on water. To keep water liquid, reactors must maintain pressures of hundreds of bars, hundreds of times the pressure inside a car tire, a tiny crack, a drop in pressure, and the water instantly turns to steam. The cooling system fails, and the core overheats uncontrollably. Remember Chernobyl in 1986? Just a few seconds of lost pressure, and the skies over Ukraine filled with radioactive clouds. Or Fukushima in 2011 when a tsunami cut the power, cooling water ran out the core, melted down, and Japan had to shut down more than 50 reactors. Now look at the Gobi Desert. China is experimenting with a thorium molten salt reactor, a true technological revolution. Here, the fuel isn't in solid rods, but dissolved directly in molten salt. The mixture is heated above 930 degrees Fahrenheit. The salt turns liquid, serving as both fuel and coolant. No high pressure, no risk of pipe explosions or sudden steam bursts. See the difference. This is no longer the water tragedy. And if something goes wrong, the molten salt fuel drains into a safety tank and solidifies. No core meltdown, no radioactive clouds. On top of that molten salt, reactors can be refueled or have fuel removed while running. No need to shut down, no spending millions of dollars each time to replace fuel rods. Do you see the flexibility here? A plant that can generate power continuously and optimize fuel use is needed something traditional reactors can't do. As we mentioned, because these plants don't rely on water cooling. They can be built in dry regions far from the coast, even in the middle of the Gobi Desert, or in places with sparse infrastructure and low population density. Yes, if a rare accident happens here, the impact on people is greatly reduced. That's not all. Thorium doesn't just generate energy, it can actually breed more fissile material than it consumes, meaning the reactor can sustain itself for many cycles. And the supply in the Earth's crust. Thorium is found at about 10.5 parts per million, over three times as common as uranium, which is only about three parts per million. That's enough for humanity to use for tens of thousands of years. Nuclear reactors in general don't emit greenhouse gases during operation. But thorium reactors produce even less long-lived nuclear waste than modern uranium reactors. All of this is crucial for humanity as we get serious about tackling climate change. The world is actively searching for alternative, sustainable, and reliable energy technologies. At COP28 in 2023, more than 20 countries pledged to triple their nuclear power capacity by 2050. Thorium is clearly a strategic card. But here's a fact you should remember. So far, no country has successfully commercialized thorium reactors on a large scale. China is just getting started. Also, you might not know that China now controls about 97% of the world's supply of rare earth elements, strategic materials for everything from smartphones and electric cars to wind turbines. And thorium naturally comes with these rare earth ores almost as a bonus. See the advantage here. While other countries have to import uranium from Canada or Australia, China can use its own domestic minerals to fuel its nuclear ambitions. The key point here is energy security. China's current uranium reserves are enough for its existing reactors. But as the number of reactors grows, shortages are almost certain. Thorium becomes the answer sharply reducing the need for imported uranium and bringing long-term sustainability. And looking ahead, if China masters molten salt reactor thorium technology, it could export this model to developing countries where electricity demand is booming. But access to uranium is limited. This isn't just a technological leap, it's a geopolitical lever reshaping the global energy balance. 
And maybe this is the question you're asking yourself. If thorium is so good, why is China still the pioneer after 200 years? The answer is pretty harsh. Uranium. 235 is just too convenient. It works well as easy to control and most importantly cheap. So no one's been eager to adopt a more complicated, expensive option. As we've discussed, thorium isn't a direct fuel for fission. It's fissionable, but not fissile. Simply put, you can't just put thorium into a reactor and expect it to generate power. It needs an initial spark from uranium-235 or plutonium to become uranium-233, which can really burn in the reactor. This makes the design more complex and drives up costs. Are you willing to take the harder road just for the promise of a cleaner future? And there's more, the risk of molten salt corrosion. At temperatures above 1,300 degrees, Fahrenheit fluoride salts can corrode heat-resistant steel risking leaks after just five to 10 years. Yes, super alloys are being developed, but who's willing to pour billions of dollars into a technology whose lifespan isn't proven? There's also the lingering fear of nuclear security. During Operation Thorium-232, turns into uranium-233, a material that can be used to make bombs. It's harder than plutonium, but not impossible. A technology promoted as green could turn gray in the wrong hands. See the paradox, and finally, the economics. Thorium is abundant, but it's only a byproduct when mining rare earths. Extracting it is expensive while uranium is still cheap, and existing infrastructure is already paid off. In a market that always prioritizes low costs, who's bold enough to accept early losses for far-off benefits. Still despite these obstacles, thorium continues to attract global interest, even if only in small projects or research. Everyone understands if we can harness it, this could be the energy card of the future. India is a prime example. Since the 1950s, the country has considered thorium its ace to make up for uranium, which accounts for just 1 to 2% of its domestic reserves. In contrast, India holds about 20.5% of the world's thorium enough to generate around 500 gigawatts of electricity for over four centuries, a figure any nation would envy. Thorium is mainly found in monazite ore, which contains 6 to 12% thorium phosphate ThPO4. The world currently has about 16 million tons of monazite, with India's southern and eastern coasts holding up to 12 million tons. Outside India, major reserves are in Brazil, Australia, the United States, and Egypt, while China, despite leading in technology, ranks only 11th in thorium reserves, with just one-eighth as much as India. In reality, only a few countries like India, Brazil, Vietnam, and Malaysia actively mine thorium with annual production under 10,000 tons tiny compared to its huge potential. Europe isn't standing still either. Denmark's Copenhagen Atomics, together with Switzerland's Paul Scherer Institute, launched a four-year project and built a molten salt reactor prototype using lithium, thorium, and uranium fluoride, raising $21.2 million in 2022. In the Netherlands, the Ryzen company raised about $13 million to develop the Thion-1 molten salt reactor with a thermal output of up to 250 megawatts, enough electricity for 250,000 households, and is even testing nuclear waste as a fuel source, aiming for the first system to operate before 2030. Back to China, after a series of bold moves, China's next target is to build a 60-megawatt demonstration reactor right in the Gobi Desert between 2025 and 2029. Yes, from 2 megawatts to 60 megawatts. This isn't just a bigger version of the current test reactor, it's a true Gen 4 technology showcase. The design will feature a graphite core over 10 feet high operating at nearly 1,300 degrees Fahrenheit and will use supercritical carbon dioxide turbines, a breakthrough to boost efficiency and reduce energy losses. If this project goes online, it could become the world's first commercial standard for thorium molten salt reactors opening the door to exporting Gen 4 technology and anti-corrosion materials, 
a market worth hundreds of billions of dollars over the next few decades. More importantly, it will drive green hydrogen production from excess heat putting pressure on wind and solar energy. With nuclear power costs projected to drop below $40 per megawatt hour, this success could reshape China's energy strategy and potentially spark a global Gen 4 wave, changing the technology and economics of world energy. So what do you think is thorium the next big thing in global energy? Or is it still just a risky technological dream? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss our next stories on mega projects that could change the world.